Hey, don't look now, but basketball season is quickly approaching. And for Stony Brook Athletics, that means live sports are just around the corner. We speak with men's basketball head coach Gino Ford about the upcoming season. But don't forget about football. The Seawolves will be back on the field this spring, and so will cornerbacks coach Diamond Weaver. Find out his unique path to Stony Brook. And the family that plays together stays together. Cousins Kaylee Huff and Ellie Macera are looking to help propel the women's lacrosse team to its first national title. All that and more, Seawolves Weekly starts right now. Welcome to Seawolves Weekly, I'm Jonah Carr. Stony Brook sports have been on a hiatus since March, and Seawolves fans have been itching for sports to come back. The first one coming back is basketball, and our job is to get you ready for the start of the season. So let's kick things off by hearing from the head coach of the men's basketball team, Gino Ford. I think that basketball has a real opportunity here uh, to you know, be very much on the forefront with uh, people's minds because typical year, uh, you know, especially for our alums, you know, you kind of think of those first few football home games with nice weather and big crowds, and uh, we weren't able to do that this year, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, we're going to need to kick things off. Uh, it's a little later than normal, but uh, I, I do have a good feeling about uh, the interest level of our program. It's, it's remained high, and I think we've kept pretty decent engagement with our season ticket holders, and hopefully we can, at some point in the year, get back to having fans in the building. Uh, but until then, they'll have to to uh, enjoy it on television. I think there was um, you know, a lot of anticipation just to be able to get out there and play, and our guys are excited that we're gonna you know, be able to have a season, and I, I think that there have been more questions than answers. I think that's fair, and so it's hard. You know, It's hard for the coaches, but it's really hard for young athletes who a uh, big part of their image and self-image is as a basketball player, and, uh, to not know or have dates, uh, you know, needing to slide around and be flexible and those kind of things is difficult. But uh, but we're excited. I mean, we're excited. We're going to get to play, and we've been in the gym practicing for a few weeks, so it, it's been nice to get back to you know kind of the things that the guys love to do. As coaches and players, we're just looking forward to competing. You know, you just want to get out there and compete and play and uh, have opportunities to. Uh, experience the, the thrill of victory and to some degree the shared suffering of failure. I mean that's part of the, the experience too and so I, you know, I think that's what you miss uh, for, as a member of the team. I think the, the fans, uh, it'll be exciting because there are a lot of new faces. They'll get to study some new guys and see some, some uh, changes. Uh, you know, we've, we've had, uh, I can, you know, Tyler, Mo uh, are much different uh, than they were a year ago. Mo Gee's not even, um, uh, you know, the, the old Mo was a nice player. Uh, this new version of Mo uh, is vastly improved and he is significantly better than what he was a year ago. I think Tyler worked really hard in the offseason to improve his ball handling and uh, some things that needed to get better. Uh, and so, I, you know, I think the fans will be excited to see got stories like that where guys made big jumps um, individually and then I think they're going to get to see a whole new group of, uh, of players that they can enjoy watching and, um, you know, get to know over the next uh, several seasons. I think our whole coaching staff feels this way. We've been really pleased with the newcomers. Uh, I, I think that they have added um, some athleticism, some length, uh, some shooting, uh, and, and just a good mentality uh, of guy. I, I really like the, the group as a whole of the, you know, when you look at those newcomers and it can be easy to come into a new spot and you want to show what you can do and you feel pressure to perform and uh, sometimes you get a little outside of yourself and these guys have really come in and just tried to find their niche and uh, how they can help the team and I think there's a lot of talent there. I think there's some, uh, you know, opportunity if you guys could find themselves in the starting lineup, certainly, uh, and that's exciting. Uh, and and I think that you know the thing we have is talent. The thing we don't have is experience. So we're going to really need the experience of, you know, particularly Mo and Tyler who played a lot last year. Um, you know, and then we have some guys that have experience, but you know, haven't played here. You know, Frankie was here, but he was he was in practice and. Um, you know, Taven got some quality minutes. Jordan McKenzie has been a quality performer for us. Uh, so we've got guys that have experience that are going to need to play better than what they played last year because they're going to be in expanded roles. I think they're excited about that opportunity. 
I think they're capable of doing what needs done, and, and I just think that new group really gives us some um, a nice shot in the arm in terms of ability to play. And it's exciting. It's been an exciting group to work with, and uh, they get along well. And uh, hopefully, we can find the right mix of uh, you know chemistry, as as we all know, is important. And uh, I think that when the year, when all the dust settles, we'll end up uh, being pretty successful, as long as everybody keeps the right mindset that they've shown to this point. All right, you just heard from Coach Ford. Now let's hear from one of the players. We'll start with one of the new guys, Manhattan transfer Tyke Green. And why not get to know him in his element? So we threw a mic on Tyke in practice. Take a look. You want a mic? What mic? You want a mic right now? What are you talking about? Nah, that's a bug. It's a bug. It's like a black, a black view. <laughs> Am I going to do the thing? Am I going to drop like LeBron? He's like, nope, I'm doing a game. That's a game. Yes, you are a funny guy. I'm calling it, baby. Good shot, Taiki. Teach you some Spanish, bro. Huh? You got to teach you some Spanish. Muy bien. Muy bien, right? What do you say? Excelente. Excelente? Excelente. Make them help. Make them help. Oh, I got him. This is freaking green. We got to keep working at it. It's what we here for. It's what we here for. Yes, sir, Tay. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. I'm ready. Hand down. Man down. Oh, watch the camera. Don't worry about it. Still good, baby. There you go. That's a good dive. That's a great dive. Hey, it was rough. Cut, 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 cut. Way to shoot, T. There's too many T's on this team. I gotta change my name. You can experience the entire world right here. Here at Stony Brook, the faculty treat students more like professionals. Stony Brook helped me go further faster because I was able to get my bachelor's and master's in five years, and that helped me land my dream job. There is that something for you out there if you're willing to go and find it. Coming together and feeling that sense of school spirit, that is one of my favorite experiences. From the moment you step into Stony Brook's door, they are already encouraging you to do research and meet with professors. There's more we can accomplish together than we can apart. Welcome back. Let's catch you up on the top headlines in Stony Brook Athletics as we shine a spotlight on the Seawolves. The United Soccer Coaches recognized both the men's and women's soccer teams, honoring them with college team academic awards. The women's team boasted an impressive 3.59 GPA, while the men's team finished with a 3.16. And from the textbook to the scorebook, the MLB playoffs are underway, and Travis Jankowski is the second Seawolves alum to make an appearance in the postseason. The Stony Brook Hall of Famer was a pinch runner for the Reds in Game 1 of the Wild Card Series. And Seawolves football is set to return this spring. The six-game conference schedule is intended to start on March 6th. That slate, expected to run through April 17th, will also include a bye week and use a north-south division alignment with the Seawolves in the north. Stony Brook is also expected to add two non-conference games, bringing the total number to eight. As the players return to the field, cornerbacks coach Diamond Weaver will be back on the sidelines for year two. The California native has had a lot of ups and downs throughout his life, but one thing has always remained constant, his love for football. I came from very humble beginnings, and to be in the position that I stand in today, uh, you know, there was no one that surrounded me at the time of my early adolescence that could predict that I will be in a position I am today as um, an educator, a mentor, and a motivator. I was, you know, one foot in, one foot out in terms of school, and then, you know, being out in the streets and, and being in, involved in, in activities that, you know, 
are, are going down the wrong path. You know, I would be put in situations from peer pressure or, you know, I would make the decision on my own to um, go in different directions rather than doing what I needed to do in school in order for me to get education, get good grades, have good behavior, and then ultimately participate on my high school sports teams. After, you know, just really kind of just being my, my, my own worst enemy, I just, I gave up on high school sports at this time in my life. And I just really started to focus on a lot of different type of activities. And I was, you know, I was kicked out of numerous high schools for, for, for multiple reasons. And there was a few coaches at some of these high schools that, that, that I attended that tried to, you know, go the extra mile and, and, and meet me 75% of the way. But, you know, I just continued to just be my own worst enemy and put a, a brick on my own back and, and, just, and just couldn't, couldn't get out of my own way. You know, I realized that that wasn't the life that I wanted for myself, you know, because there was two options. It was either prison or death, you know, and once that light bulb clicked and, you know, I, I understood that, you know, there was people that were close around me, some of my peers who um, got in trouble for different crimes and was doing, you know, some serious time. And there was also some of my peers who ended up, you know, losing their life to, to gun violence. And I realized that, you know, I'm not so much different from them and I can e easily end up being one of those statistics so, you know, I started to, to change my life around and I really started to dedicate myself to my academics and, and to my athletics. Um, but by this time, you know, I had, I had dug myself in, in such a deep hole, um, but I was able to, you know, ultimately graduate from high school and, and, and get my diploma. And I had some attention from a, a few colleges, um, but because of my academics, I wasn't able to move forward or progress. So I chose to go to Santa Rosa Junior College, which was a great opportunity. You know, all of the resources that I needed was in place for me to um, excel uh, on and off the field. Still, you know, going through struggles and still, you know, rough around the edges and trying to, uh, you know, figure out my path and my purpose. But ultimately, at this point in my life, I realized I have to get an education. I have to take my academic serious and I have to excel. You know, I have to put the same determination and, and, and hard work that I, you know, put into my athletics, I have to put into my academics as well. Ultimately, earning um, my associate's degree in sociology and I got a full scholarship to the University of Akron to play football and I was also honored to be the student athlete of the year which is someone that they honor who comes from humble beginnings and takes um, you know the untraditional path to the junior college and excels in, in, in athletics and in academics. I now stand before you as a you know college educated man and, and, and someone who daily is mentoring, motivating, and inspiring future generations to um, use athletics as a way to develop and grow their academics. And, you know, statistically speaking, you know, from my foundation and my upbringing, you know, majority of the kids that, that face those, those adversities, you know, unfortunately end up doing life in prison or end up no longer living because of the things that they have to face daily, you know? So, you know, I stand before you today as someone who is very humble because of my upbringing and just, you know, just so grateful and thankful for, you know, the position that I stand in today. For everybody out there, you know, if, if you're in a position right now and you believe that, you know, you have what it takes, you have the potential, then I'm a product of it, you know? I, I believed in myself, I kept a strong faith I worked hard and I made the sacrifices and you know that's all it took I didn't do nothing special you know I've been up I've been down I've been high I've been low but ultimately I just kept going and I didn't quit you know I stayed persistent just trust in yourself and don't give up and I know it sounds so simple to say it's such a cliche thing to say but at the end of the day that's the ingredients that it takes Staying inside Laval Stadium, the men's lacrosse team is back on the field for their off-season workouts. And now in year two, head coach Anthony Gallardi is ready to have his team compete for the America East Trophy in 2021. Let's take you inside practice for some sights and sounds of the Seawolves. 
Make sure when you come on this field, when we blow the whistle, we say we're ready for practice. We are locked and loaded. Timing. Hey, what? Timing. What? Timing. Get your head around. Spring width. Come on. Ready? Over on the women's side, head coach Joe Spelina has always seen his team as family. Sometimes, quite literally. Back in 2018, sisters Kylie and Taryn Olmiller helped lead the Seawolves to the NCAA quarterfinals. Now this year, cousins Kaylee Huff and Ellie Massara look to take that 2018 success a few steps further. We originally lived in Smithtown, and then when I was in third grade, we moved out to Eastport right down the street from them. So it's like a one minute walk. So we were basically raised together since I was eight and you were what? Like I don't two. Even, yeah. <laughs> Um, so we were always together and lacrosse has been part of our family since I think we were probably since you were born since I was four no, before because yeah our uncles are forever like involved. so you know we always had those pick up lacrosse games in the backyard and then once we started getting older everybody was playing club and whatever else but I got to play with Kelsey I got to play with Emily Ellie's older sister but her and I never got to play together besides backyard lacrosse yeah it was really, our family's really competitive, so it was always a brawl in the backyard. It's definitely incredible because I always have someone to like push me and I look up to her so much, so she's kind of like, I don't know, she's someone that I look up to, so it's an honor being able to play with her. To be able to play at a high level with Ellie now, beyond the backyard with our little cousins is really something special and it's my last year playing lacrosse forever. So I think that the way that everything panned out and worked out that I get to play with her this year is really like the cherry on top. My freshman year in March, I ended up committing to Stony Brook and uh, I don't know, I just, I talked to Joe and I obviously love it here. It's close to home. We have a big family, like we mentioned. So it was just like, everything was like here. So it was kind of an easy decision. Lacrosse, academics, close to home. Here we yeah, are. So <laughs> I went the opposite path. I went probably the furthest that I could have went from home, which is funny. I never would have expected that, but um, I'm so grateful for that experience that I got to live in California and play at USC for four years, but um, you know, with everything that happened, I knew I always wanted to get my MBA, and then after four years in California, I was ready to be close to home again, and it kind of all just panned out and fell, the pieces fell into place for me between the MBA program here, and then I had a conversation with Coach, and when I finally decided, I went over to Ellie's house right down the street, and you know, I don't even think you guys at that point thought that I was going to take my fifth year because originally I, I didn't know if I wanted to. And after talking to Coach, I really was like, I, I have to do this. Um, and I went there and I was like, just in conversation, you know, hey, what do you guys think if I did my fifth year? And Ellie's dad jokingly said, oh, at Stony Brook? And I just looked at them and Ellie was like, what? And you know, <laughs> no, that was that was great too. That's a memory I think that our families will remember forever too. We were sitting right in the kitchen and Ellie was like, really? And she's so funny now too. Every day she's like, I'm so grateful you're here with me. So, you know, we grew up basically raised together. Like she's a little sister to me. So it's great that we have this experience now. At first I was like, she came up to me or whatever and she stood behind me and she was like, yeah, I'm taking it at Stony Brook. And I was like in shock. I was like, I was like, wait, what? Like, I was just like, it was just unbelievable because I, I never thought I would get the chance to play with her because I got to play with Kelsey yeah. and Emily, but never her. So it was just. No, I think you guys thought was I like, was kidding. I literally was like, what? Like I was like, <laughs> I was speechless. And then I don't know, it's just. And I think I didn't even realize at first, not that I didn't realize, but I was like, oh my gosh, I never played with Ellie before. And then that was honestly the cherry on top for me. It was like the MBA program, playing lacrosse for coach, and 
my cousins here that I've never played lacrosse before with. So, you know, it was definitely the cherry on top for me. Especially through this pandemic, like everything is so unprecedented and unpredictable. So like definitely having someone here, like with me, that's a part of my family is definitely really important to obviously both of our parents. For me, just, you know, having been in college before and definitely maybe like struggling a little bit just from the transition from high school to college because it is so much more fast paced. I've kind of just told her, you know, be resilient. Things aren't exactly what she said. Things aren't always going to go your way, but the best thing that you can do is keep your head up and keep going. It's definitely been hard because I don't, again, I'm like a freshman, so I don't really know what to expect in the college game. I've watched all the games, but I haven't actually <laughs> played in one. So having Kaylee here is actually a really big benefit that I'm like really looking forward to because she can help me through and give me some pointers on <laughs> what I can use from transitioning from high school to college. You can experience the entire world right here. Here at Stony Brook, the faculty treat students more like professionals. Stony Brook helped me go further faster because I was able to get my bachelor's and master's in five years and that helped me land my dream job. There is that something for you out there if you're willing to go and find it. Coming together and feeling that sense of school spirit, that is one of my favorite experiences. From the moment you step into Stony Brook's door, they are already encouraging you to do research and meet with professors. There's more we can accomplish together than we can apart. Welcome back to Sea Wolves Weekly. Stony Brook continues its celebration of Latinx Heritage Month with softball Sophia Chambers and men's track and fields Antonio Aguilar. Hi, my name is Sophia Chambers and I'm on the Stony Brook softball team. As far as my heritage goes, um, my father's from Iowa and he is of Irish descent, but my mother immigrated here from El Salvador, so I'm half Salvadorian. Growing up in like a bicultural household was, um, it, it was really exciting. I think that's the word to use for it. You never got bored. Um, different food, different traditions. We sort of had this like blend of my dad's traditions and my mom's traditions when it came to holidays and meal times and you know the clothes we wore, the hairstyles we wore as little girls. So I think exciting is definitely the word to use for it. Uh, the story of my mother coming from El Salvador to the United States is something that's always been in my life. It's one of the first, you know, stories you hear at bedtime when you're a kid. And um, it's something that I always keep in mind in the struggles that she had to endure to sort of get where she is now and put me in the position that I am now is something that I, you know, forever respect and is always in my mind every day. Hola, me llamo Sofia Chambers y yo jugo softball para Stony Brook University y yo soy una lobo marina. Hi, my name is Antonio Aguilar and I'm on men's track and field. My dad came here at a young age. I think you said he was like 15. He would come here and then eventually he got his visa and he would come here to work, better pay, obviously better than it is down there in El Salvador. And he would, he eventually learned how to speak English and studied to get a citizenship. And when he became a citizen, he brought my mom over when she was pregnant with me and my twin sister. And uh, yeah, I was born in 2000 and uh, my mom came here and eventually she learned how to sp speak English and got her citizenship as well. So. I'm very proud of both of them getting their citizenship and both learning learning how to speak English even though my mom doesn't really speak it as much. She always speaks to me in Spanish and my dad speaks to me in English a lot. While growing up, uh, it was very difficult fighting back both like, because I would assimil I already assimilated to this country when my parents were kind of getting into it. My mom didn't really know much English so it was very difficult. Uh, like let's say going out places and like having to translate for my mom and she wouldn't understand and just that barrier of language and culture where it's very different being an American than it is from Salvadorian and then eventually my mom kind of grew and learned that how to, how to assimilate to this country and the culture here where it's more like 
it's on your own and it's very diverse where you go places and stuff like that. As I want to go into teaching mathematics and teach kids who don't know English very well math and Spanish and it's just knowing both cultures and growing up knowing both languages as first languages to me is very important to me and I feel like I want to help out the world and show people that we're amazing people just like the rest of the world. Hola, me llamo Antonio Aguilar, soy parte del equipo Atletismo en Stony Brook y soy Lobo Marino. Latinx Heritage Month runs through October 15th. We leave you tonight with a new face to Stony Brook Athletics, but someone who is more than familiar with the area. Long Island native Alicia Douse joins the women's soccer program after two seasons at Rutgers, and she's the subject of tonight's Get to Know series. When I was 13, I got invited to play with the U.S. national team. Um, so that was probably like my biggest memory because it was just such an honor, like being able to wear the, the crest and represent the country. I'm like kind of like a goofy person. So I guess like loud, like goofy. And I am pretty loyal too though. So we'll do like a little sentimental stepbrothers. Definitely what we do in the shadows. I don't know if you heard of it, but it's really funny. Highly recommend. Probably teaching my dog how to be potty trained. That took a lot of work. Do I have to save a thing? Because if I had to save one thing in my house, I would save my house. I like Nelly, I'm not gonna lie. You know, the oldies but goodies. I guess some people tell me that I look like Ariana Grande, so maybe her. I mean, I don't really see it, but maybe it's because we're both really short. Probably poor Jeff. I mean, there's so much to do, and <clears throat> everyone always brings their dogs and everything, so it's definitely like a hot spot over there. And it's right by Stony Brook, so yeah. And that'll just about do it for us tonight. Make sure to tune in next week for another episode of Sea Wolves Weekly, Thursday night at 10.30, right here on Altice Channel 20. And make sure to follow Stony Brook Athletics on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and check out stonybrookathletics.com for everything you need to know about the Sea Wolves. For Jonah Carp, I'm Sam Rothman. Thanks for watching.